Hello team, my name is Mahesh. Today we are looking into some of the core concepts of the Docker. In this, in the, in this uh, chapter itself, we are looking into uh, various, various topics such as the architecture that we, that we are looking, uh, the, how the Docker works and the various le level of architecture the Docker working. The, uh, the, how the containerization work, how, how we can create a container, how we can run them, uh, the basic commands of, uh, commands of a Docker, how we can uh, find out the images, how we can run the images how we can create create a basic a docker file how uh, there are some like i have said tips that uh, that i am share that i was sharing to like create how we how we can use leverage the documentation itself to uh, cre create a, a docker file a docker file how the multi-stage docker works that that are that are uh, linked uh, there are two three videos in uh, in the series itself that are linked together to uh, like get the overall idea about the docker how the docker is working and the overall uh, overall each and every step each and everything about the docker so docker is a containerization platform throughout the containerization platform we can ship the application uh, in the small in the smaller in the smaller part which we in the smaller smaller part which is we called as a we, we called as a containers which is uh, totally based on the microservice level architecture so in this um, there are there are there are several peer architectures also which is the virtual machines and the uh, bare, bare metal hardwares so virtual machine there are some limitations over the virtual machine the virtual machine can uh, like use the use the existing hardware and get the like get the uh, if you if you have a, a 10 uh, if you have a 100 gb of ram you can uh, it it can it can leverage that existing existing hardware and take a piece of that particular hardware and divide it into several virtual machines or several uh, guest operating system as we can uh, as we call them such as uh, uh, such as in the virtual machine we have a basic infrastructure where we have a server we have a ram we have a cpu we have a physical configuration of a machine then we have a hypervisor the hypervisor which is the which is uh, it could be a vmware it could be a it, it could be a uh, enterprise level uh, enterprise level uh, architecture uh, hypervisor environment it could be then we have a guest operating system which i totally isolated from each and uh, each and every virtual machine first is the first uh, there is a, uh, each each guest OS have a say, separate dependency separate packages it could be it could be uh, like uh, it could be isolated from each uh, from the each other so each each of uh, each content uh, each uh, each virtual machine have a uh, its independent guest OS. Uh, there, there have a like private kernel of it, and the application on the top of it, which is the application, it which is which is work on the same level. Uh, it it is taking up uh, taking up uh, like a piece of a uh, hardware, and it is se separate uh, segregate the piece of hardware to the uh, virtual machine itself. Once the like piece of hardware uh, like once our uh, infrastructure uh, of the like particular like we have once we once the uh, once our uh, like the configuration is over we have distributed the overall configuration to the virtual machine itself the uh, the virtual machine scene is over then the bare metal works uh, the bare metal works on the same same kind of a level this is a bare metal hardware kind of a thing and we are using a, a like there is also one kind of hardware which is virtual machine as we can call um, in the in the virtual machine itself we have a same infrastructure which is work on a, uh, like our laptop or the or the desktop itself it is no need to get a get any like a custom hardware or any particular uh, like architecture hardware itself you can run on any machine then you have a os a os layer which is your windows operating system or any kind of operating system which is there then you, then you have a virtual machine hypervisor platform which is the vmware virtual box then uh, the and and that virtual uh, that hypervisor box will leverage uh, that hyper hyper box will create a, uh, create the same environment as as uh, as a bare metal hardware so let me show it to you uh, virtual machine uh, architecture architecture diagram you can say yeah it is work look the physical layer, physical hardware the host operating system which is uh, which is i'm working in the windows 11 itself then the vmware hardware hypervisor the virtual we can call it we can get the virtual box also then the operating system then the kernel kernel binaries itself and then the application 
it is it is costing too much and it will, it is taking a too too much of resources for the smaller application to deploy it is it is taking a more resources it uh, for the smaller uh, for the smaller application itself for the smaller smaller piece of code itself it is taking a lot lot of memory lot of space uh, space of the application we need to keep it lighter and it, it we need to keep it as it is run anywhere regardless uh, regardless of the application regardless of the hardware itself or regardless of the operating system itself so here comes the uh, container game which is the first the infrastructure which is our local hardware as we call it uh, uh, any server on any or any uh, x86 architecture as we call then the operating system which is the base level operating system which is the linux uh, most probably it is a linux and the container uh, container engine which is the docker container engine as we uh, once we install on the um, once we install on the ec2 ec2 environment i can show you to how the um, docker container uh, container container daemon is work and after that the it can leverage the existing kernel from the base image uh, on the uh, on the uh, operating system itself and it will it will leverage the existing existing hardware uh, existing hardware and existing libraries to create an app create and build the application which is called as a container and it is works separately as isolated containers to like uh, each and every application it is because of because of which which is, it is very very lighter very very lighter in nature it could be a 10 mb or uh, 50 mb max to max or 20 uh, and it 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 could be depend on os to os and the uh, dependency which is, which is installed on the particular container itself so so in this in this tutorial itself we can look the look the look the architecture and the, how the we can run the, run our con, run our container and deploy deploy into server and all those things we are looking into looking into this so you have a question in your mind maybe so why why you need to scale why you need architecture to scale to scale at any point of uh, like why you need architecture to scale itself uh, look if you have a if you have multiple uh like if you have a uh like millions of requests per second or we, we, you are getting a many traffic per second throughout this architecture it is taking uh, too much time to uh, like uh, take uh, take the operating system take the uh, local hypervisor to to scale this op uh, to scale the scale this local uh hardware itself you need a lot of time or uh, you need a lot of uh like you need a lot of resources you need a lot of time you need a lot of power consumption all those things you need to manage the entire piece of hardware in a, in your on premises itself it is taking it is taking too much too much uh, space itself all, all those things are like uh, goes on and on and um, gets get covered covered in the get covered on over there but because of the container and the multi uh, like uh, we can say uh, because of the container itself it is very easy to uh, like scale the resources whenever we want and uh, decrease the resources whenever we want through throughout the, the throughout the way uh, throughout the uh, like uh, the the uh, the leverage which is provided by the aws or or any, or any cloud platform that that is providing throughout this container images we can deploy a record list of uh, regardless to any operating system or in regardless regardless to uh, any environment or any uh, like any uh, through we can run our application anywhere we want basically and it is very very light in nature so it, it is deployed very quickly to uh, it is scale very 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 fast so there are two types of scaling basically uh, first one is a vertical and the horizontal scaling let me show you to you what is a vertical and the horizontal scaling uh, vertical and the horizontal scaling yeah this could be a good image yeah the vertical scaling is basically you are you are scaling up the resources you you are expanding the resources you are expanding the base you are expanding the base machine of what uh, you are expanding the resources of virtual machine if you have a 100 gb of ram you are expanding to 200 or 300 gb of ram but at the some point you you are fa you are fa still facing the issue where you can uh, like get the the resources getting overwhelmed you your application get crashed or and there are some memory leaks there there are thousands thousands of error you are getting on the application itself because there is there is no uh, like there are some some barrier over there so 
for the horizontal scaling itself we are creating a separate uh, creating a separate uh, a separate piece of code which is running independently in a micro microservice based architecture and it is we can we can spawn thousands of containers with the with the help of a docker container and the, all those things but throughout the throughout the horizontal scaling we can uh, horizontally scale we can uh, for the for the pur purpose of a scaling we can uh, we can we can take a leverage of a multi uh, like we can say uh, we can say uh, multi uh, we can say we can uh, segregate our code into multiple pieces and uh, we can deploy independently on a independently on a each of uh, each of the containers so it is working uh, working in a, working in the distributed environment itself so th this is the main uh, like the overview about the horizontal horizontal and virtual scaling uh, the horizontal scaling refers as adding additional nodes and the vertical scaling describes the adding more more power to your current virtual machine so uh, this is a uh, uh, this is a uh, a good description we can say um, let's look how how we can is uh, let's look how we can create and create an ec2 instance and uh, uh, let's look how we can run and uh, run and create our custom uh, create our cus create a cus custom container and how we can run the overall things in the docker itself so let me launch in one ec2 instances let me call it as a docker um, we are using a ubuntu instance which is ubuntu 2204 20, i am using i am using t2 micro for now i'll uh, i'll uh, let you know when when you need to use a like a larger uh, like a big uh, like a big family of ec2 instances and all those things and uh, let me use the select security group we can keep by default as it and launch instance once the instance is launched we can we can install the docker daemon and after that we can we can able to success we can launch our particular content we can launch our um, existing containers on the uh, on the um, container on the on the docker itself so let me show it to you Conte there, there is one uh, major major advantage of a Docker, which is the uh, um, which is uh, which is based on the container itself. The container is the stateless stateless basically. When the container is shut down, there is no open data persistence in that in the container itself because of which it is it it is become very lighter and the like very uh, very uh, it can seamlessly deploy thousands of containers in the very seamless in, in the very seamless manner. So there is a major major advantage advantage of it when you are creating a custom image uh, we are looking into how we can create a custom image uh, so we are when you are creating a oh, sorry uh, let me connect to it uh, we are using a root user for now and let's try to connect yes uh, when you are when we are using docker file docker file is basically a blueprint which uh, which which is the overall blueprint for the application which is, which is which we are uh, deploying on the container itself how the uh, which uh, which port uh, which is exposing which application it is running how the uh, how the overall configuration of a docker container which is written on the particular docker file after that it will create a docker image um, wait, let me show it uh, let me explain in a proper manner uh, once uh, first we are creating we are creating a docker file once we create a docker file we have uh, add we have uh, used the configuration uh, we have we have placed all, all of our configuration on the docker file itself and after that we are we are creating uh, we are once we run this docker file docker file itself it is creating a docker image for us which is uh, compiled uh, which is compiled of all, all the docker docker file configuration it is converted into docker image and throughout this docker image we can deploy the application seamlessly to anywhere it is basically our uh, it is basically a small copy of our of, of our application which is microservice uh, based architecture we can say and throughout this image architecture we can deploy seamlessly anywhere so throughout the docker pull we can pull the image and throughout the push itself we can push it to local uh, docker hub which is the repository for the docker itself and you can share this docker you, you can share this docker image whenever you want uh, like 
there is a central repository for the docker docker it, uh, there is a central repository for the docker itself which is called as a docker hub and throughout the docker hub itself we can deploy simply uh, we can store our docker images and share it share it with anyone it could it could be you can share it with the public itself or you can share with the, uh, any uh, you can uh, push it is central repository to store all uh, store our docker images and docker uh, overall docker images and throughout the docker pull push we can pull the image and the push the image to the docker repository uh, this is this is a uh, this is a quite uh, quite advanced part we can say we can look into where we can look into more and more uh, steps we are uh, we are uh, running it uh, we are uh, creating and uh, uh, we are creating more and more lectures on this and we can look how how the in, the, in depth how the uh, overall things work in the, over here once we do that we can do we can once we pull or push oh, we can push the docker image to docker hub or we can place it low on the local itself we can run throughout the docker uh, run and the image id i can show you to you how the image how the image id you will get and how the uh, how you can run the container and the basic funny commands and the basic commands the overall things we are looking into <laughs> sorry we are looking into to to run a docker container itself so this is our machine itself uh, let me increase the font uh, just click just update the repository first we am update apt hyphen get apt hyphen get update hyphen y uh, once the repository get updated uh, just give me a second yes repository is updated apt hyphen get install docker dot io and docker hyphen compose hyphen y it will automatically install a docker a docker uh, daemon and the overall docker container for us and throughout this we can directly run our docker commands directly over here look it has it has created a docker container d dot service I can show you too how we, how you can manage this service and overall things. It is a basic part of the Linux administration itself. Yes, it is installed. Let's let's look how the service is running or not throughout the system CTL status Docker. Uh, Docker. The service name is a Docker itself. Yes, the service is running and it is look the service is active and the run running mode so let me enable the service once the this uh, once the uh, this um, ec2 instance will get uh, get uh, restarted it is enabled by default enable and once we enable yes doc let's look how the docker help command is work this is the first command which we are looking docker help throughout the help command you can get the overall uh, overall commands which is the which is used in a docker itself and we'll get get the uh, go get the overall uh, overall uh, commands of the docker itself so in this in this chapter in this session itself we are looking into uh, we're looking into the first three commands and we throughout these commands we can look uh, look in depth how we can um, how we can look overall overall things of the docker itself so let's go and uh, Let's try to run. Let's try to run one of uh, one uh, graphical command which um, which is very like one graphical command which is the Docker run. Uh, uh, Docker run the Docker image which which I am using uh, will say and the command will whad uh, will say oh no uh, the cow say we can you can also do it it is creating it is creating a, a basic uh a basic design uh, with the terminal itself it will it is print what what the message we are providing over here hello world and the when it look it it is it is showing it doesn't have a particular image that is uh, that is uh like taking it from the docker hub itself from the registry uh, from the docker hub itself it is pulling which it will pull the image and it will run for us look it is it, it is showing hello world 
the the docker well itself it is showing uh, it is it is printing our message and it is saying hello world, which is which is the uh, argument which uh, which we have provided so the first the docker uh, docker run which is used to run the container itself the image which we are providing you can provide the image id also you can look into the later part of this video throughout the throughout the cause we can uh, it is a cause is the command and throughout the throughout the argument of a command we can providing the argument to the particular and particular this nc character we can say um, we can we can provide um, any characters uh, uh, any message over here uh, just a bit uh, we can we can provide any message and it will it will provide so so firstly uh, it it have pulled the image and all those things but it didn't pull the image uh, on this part itself so why so it is it is already uh, already copied uh, it is already created a custom, custom local copy of it and throughout the copy it will run uh, run again and again with the with the local copy itself so throughout the docker images we can look the uh, the copy is created over there so the uh, name of the uh, name of the image which we, which we are using the docker id uh, the image id which i am saying you can replace by the uh, replace by the image id which which we are using this one and we can replace by the id also and the size of the image which is 247 mb only so in the in the in the letter for letter part of it we can look how we can it uh, in this image itself you couldn't able to interact with the uh, terminal itself or you couldn't uh, able not able to log into the container itself in the later part we'll see how we can able to log in if you need to search any image particular image how we can do that throughout the docker search and uh, docker search and the uh, machine which you are uh, which you need throughout this you can it is it it will find the it will find it will pull the information from the docker hub itself how much uh, the how much the operating uh, how much the container is already there to use in the docker hub itself uh, in the docker hub um, you can you can find out from here it, here itself you can copy you can do the ubuntu there is there is a lot of version of ubuntu over here and we can choose the custom you can choose the uh, like uh, i can say the official one and we can do throughout this we can pull the docker uh, pull the one to machine itself pull the machine image docker pull open to it will pull the uh, pull as as it uh, previously pulled for the uh that will say cow say uh image itself so let's look on docker ps no a docker ps not uh, sorry docker images docker images look it is it is just 77 mb only when you need to download uh, when you are uh, when you if you are, if you have previously downloaded the uh, ubuntu ubuntu machine itself it is taking around 4 or 5 gb of a machine itself but for the, for now it is taking a uh, for the container itself it is taking 77 because of which which is which is very lighter it it is only have a limited package for the running for it is only have a limited dependencies to run the uh, operating system itself there is no extra dependencies or there is no extra uh, packages on the machine itself so because of which it is be become very lighter and uh, mostly the, the dependencies are which is uh, using by this ubuntu instance which is uh, collecting from the uh, collecting from the base base uh, collecting from the base operating system which is which in our case which is the ec2 instances which is running on the ubuntu itself so if you have a like there is a major one advantage uh, I, as i see on the uh, docker itself if you have a, if you are running a uh, centos instance you can run the like fedora uh, fedora you can run any any type of a container such as you can run a fedora container you can run, run ubuntu container you can run red hat container red hat operating system which i am saying uh, for the, for which you can run any type of a linux container on the uh, Lin uh, linux kernel itself it is taking resources from the kernel and it is work it is uh, allocate the resources in the dynamic allocation dynamic memory allocation and all those things so you need to you don't need to provide and you need you don't need to uh, provide a piece of uh, 
like a hardware for it or you need you don't need to provide anything as such it is taking by default in the dynamic dynamic memory allocation we have looked the how we can search and how we can pull the image from the docker hub uh, once we've done that how how we can uh delete the existing uh existing image you can look through the docker images we can look uh, if we don't need this docker image we can just to copy this name uh, anyway let's go and do docker rmi hyphen q uh, docker rmi and the image uh our uh, image id once we paste that okay i haven't copied it uh, just maybe let me copy it from here and paste once we paste that look it is it is stopped the con uh it is saying unable to delete must be you need, you need to use the force basically we need to provide a hyphen f uh, hyphen f to delete them or uh, delete docker images it is removed so let's look uh docker images if you don't know the uh, specific com command which we which you need to use we can do the docker help command or docker h uh hyphen h we can say throughout the docker hyphen h you can uh, get the overall uh help for the uh, for the basic um like for, or, or help of uh, help of uh docker itself so for the running or creating a new container you can use the docker run command so let's create one new container and we can try to log in on that container also you can run one application we can run a default uh, http application over there and we can try to access it on the browser itself so let's look the, is there any container running no from the docker docker ps itself we can look if there are a container running over here and ps hyphen a to look overall uh, all all containers which which we have created and those two previously it is exerted means the container which is created already deleted so for uh, docker uh, didn't have any persistent storage so mm, for that you need to provide a particular volume or bind mount or all those things which we are covering in the later part of this video this this video will become a quite com complicated if you are uh, like attaching those uh, things over here so let's look at the docker images which we have uh, run the docker image docker run hyphen it which is the uh, interactive we can log in on the machine itself hyphen d for the right, running running on the background for the uh, with the daemon and all those things we are providing the image id over here and once we provide we can provide the shell for the bin and bash it is uh, we can take the access from the bin bash itself it it has a attached shell we can say and with the hyphen p it's from the p itself we can assign a port to like communicate to a specific port or not because it is a containers are basically totally isolated from the environment from the physical environment itself so you couldn't able to access or you couldn't able to take ssh from directly from the uh, base image itself so at at first first i'm just going to make them as well yeah the first first port is a con con first port is a host port which we are using and the second port is a container port which is running inside the container so once we once we click on enter it is created and created container by default so it is the container is up and running for the look how how it is it is very uh, look how look uh, how um, uh, how it is uh, how quick it is installed and how quick it is uh, it is running for the for the virtual machine itself you you need to download the gas operating system for a 5 gb we can say you need to um, install it is taking two uh, it is taking uh, 20 25 minutes according to hardware specification it will install and after that you need you need to update the dependencies it will take extra time all those things so it is running so docker ps is the command to look and the command is uh, the uh, a container is running which is up, up and running from the 42 seconds uh, the name it is by default selected by the uh, where by the container uh, by the docker daemon itself it is taking to, uh, like any a name whatever you want and it is it is connected with the host port 8080 and the container port is 8080 
so let's try to log in on this machine itself so i don't know how to log in so let's look into help itself docker help on the uh on the exec execute command in the running docker container so let's take docker docker ps we can see the running container docker exec hyphen it the container the a uh, container id which is running the container id we need paste the image id and the container id is to totally different image id is the image which we are using such as the operating system id and the container id which is provided by the docker demo which is uh, we are using it is a uh, it is uh, like uh, unique for the each and every container docker exec hyphen id and we are connecting to pin bash it look my it it might look quite uh, complicated for the first time but you can once you just take a notes of it and you can easily able to do anywhere regardless of the output or regardless of anywhere so look firstly we are connected with the root account and it, we are connected with the ec2 environment itself now it is showing a different thing how because we are inciting inside our container so if we look we are inside our container so we have run uh, we have run the uh, what we, what we can say uh, we have run uh, ubuntu instance right so we can look look at look at etc os release we have running a ubuntu 22.4 uh, lds which is running on the uh, jimmy jellyfish so let, let let's install uh, let me update the package this is uh, this is a totally isolated environment which is we are like playing in the uh, inside the container itself if we like do major changes we can uh, if we do uh, if we remove the uh, root folder itself it didn't affect our uh, it didn't affect our uh, running ec2 instance which is running on the amazon uh, over here so uh, let me look at the monitoring itself if you are using the services no uh yeah so pretty i can get updated we are updating the repository of the container once we've done that we can uh we can install the http package over here uh, apt get install http okay the http is not found uh apache 2 on this uh, on the red hat and centos environment itself it is calling as a http and the daemon is a httpd so it is installed along yeah, almost it is installed yeah just enable the service of it system detail status apache 2 okay not an issue so exiting from the container and copying the a uh, public ip of this container a uh, public ip of this uh ec2 machine itself uh public ip and paste it over here and port 8080 hope so it is work this will be called as this is port 8080 docker ps let me try to log in it again on the docker container itself beam uh, it doesn't have beam etc apache 2 uh, sites enabled okay we need to do the cd cd and the default.com beam and triple zero default.com okay beam not found look it doesn't have a it doesn't have a even basic uh, uh, like pack packages for the uh, text pad and notepad all those things so it is not loading uh, go on the uh, configuration beam we need to install the beam itself first and we need to install uh, install uh beam iphone y okay it is default default this thing on the port 80, uh, 80 itself so that's why it's not showing uh, we have updated the ports file then ports.conf and now uh, this will run
we have restarted the apache service now it might work yeah it is working it is running on the container itself so this is how it is running and yeah this is how it is running so let me exit it exit it from the container itself let me yeah so we have run, we have successfully run the docker container itself so let's try how we can remove the docker container so let me copy the container id uh, which we need to remove the container itself we just copy and paste the container id how we can remove the container uh, there is one simple command which is docker docker stop for the stop the container docker start to start the container or we can directly do the kill which i mostly prefer to do the kill docker kill and docker rm which will remove the remove do, uh, which which will kill the container and remove our docker container so it is it, it is getting stopped and the docker ps we have not able to see the container all we have removed the container from here also so it is for the docker rm which we have did right so it is removed from the history itself it's from the history also so throughout this we can do remove that uh remove the uh, remove the container and re delete the container so let's look how we can remove the images so if we pull uh, if we have pull, if we have pull uh, multiple images such as uh, alpine let me pull multiple images and look how we can uh, we can look how we can uh, okay just let me look yeah how we can um, like remove multiple uh, multiple operating system uh, multiple cont container images in a one single command so red hat there is no command for, uh, there is no red hat right um, there is something send let's let's take a centos 7 let's take a centos yeah it is pulling centos look it is just 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 83 mb which which is by default the centos is around 8 gb or something so uh, we have a multiple docker images now so it which is very very lighter so let's look how we can remove the docker images in the same or single command itself docker images throughout the docker uh, docker images uh sorry for the docker rmi which is remove images uh, hyphen one dollar for the curly braces docker images hyphen q for the uh, delete all the images and we can close the bracket once we've done that it will remove all these things so there are some images which are which is running in the background which is not able to remove which which we are using hyphen f uh, we have we have used in the wrong place um, hyphen f. Uh, not an issue we couldn't able to use over here so let's look how we can the docker images are removed or not Docker uh, image, just yeah. The Docker images are removed already. All those images, Im images are deleted. So which we, we which command we are used? Uh, Docker RMI uh, for the single uh, single operating system or uh, single image we we need to remove. We can directly pu pu put the content directly put the image ID over here, or otherwise we can for the all the Docker uh, images we need to remove. We can use the dollar sign which is Docker images and hyphen Q. Which is list all the Docker uh, Docker images uh, which are present, and it will do, do the RMI, which is remove. So, so there is there is one also one good command which I know. Uh, so let's quickly run one Docker con container, uh, which is Ubuntu, uh, UBU and DU. You can do the pull first. We can directly run the container itself. But if it, it not able to find on the local itself, it, it is directly able to pull uh, Docker pull. We want to look at this pulling we can inspect the image itself we can inspect the container we can inspect the image throughout the inspect we can uh, look the overall details uh, overall in-depth details about the docker container uh, let's look docker inspe inspect and the image id uh, the image id let's let's try to paste this one and get uh, if we get any output or work yeah look it is it is showing the overall details about the image id which which is the repo id which is the image 
what what is the configuration of a image what what how the image compilation work uh, how the image is compiled the overall things which i which i am telling about right the uh, we you need a you need a docker file for that to run a particular a particular uh, like container itself so this is the docker file and it is it is a compiled docker file uh, docker file looks very simple in the in the nature itself it is written on the uh, kind of a yaml format is there so let me show it to you uh, throughout the docker inspect we can inspect the images and the containers itself so let me run the docker container quickly Docker container ubuntu uh, i am providing uh, interactive itd and uh, i am not providing any port and bin bash docker ps we can get the container id and docker inspect container ID. once we, oh shit once we paste this we can get the overall container information that we have run so this is the overall container information resetting false and all those configuration about the container itself all those logs and all the things are mentioned over here we can get the logs all the logs of the containers also if, if we are running uh, like if you are running a like apache server which are which we are running uh previously so we can get the logs of it also docker logs and the container already paste and there is no logs in the container itself right now which is not running anything in the container itself but it is showing the logs on the logs on the uh, terminal itself you can do the redirect and particular output and all those things but later part so let me show you too how the docker file look docker file docker file kind of a look like that uh, we are providing a image which we are using from the http which is the image which is kind of a custom image uh, label which is providing a label for the author or you can provide a custom label your uh, name value uh, your key and the value basically you are copying a particular uh, your application code to the docker container itself and throughout that uh, look it's, it is a full uh, yeah from the from the run you can uh, run the command on the docker container itself work dir is basically for the choose a work dir the work directory to do the, all those things uh, to copy your copy your code and all those uh, compilation and all those things to run our run your code and throughout the throughout the cmd and throughout the entry point you can run the run your code itself so so once you've done that you can easily do the you can easily uh, easily create a custom uh, you can create create an image uh, as we able to see that we have we have pulled and pushed the images and throughout that we can look the images and we can create a custom image and we can pull and push to the docker hub itself so it is very simple if you can look in the next part of it and uh, try to do it by your own uh, on the uh, local machine itself or you can use the uh, aws environment also so to do that and yeah done